Hi, 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 hi. Thank you very much. Hi, it's Friday evening again, 15 minutes with Uncle Russ. And uh, yeah, it's, it's, it's great to see. Been a tough week. Oh my goodness, been a tough week. But you know, in spite of everything, God's on the throne. Sometimes we fall down, sometimes we make so many mistakes, and yet His love and His grace and His mercy is ever present. Amen. I'm going to sing us a little song first, above all, by Michael W. Smith, and, and I trust that he will forgive me. I'll give it my best shot. For those of you that want to sing along, please feel free. And we're going to do a little number over here. Let us first pray. Father, we just come to you in the precious and the wonderful name of Jesus, Father God. And we just thank you, Lord. That even as we go through the words of the song, Lord, you are the name above every name. All powers, above all principalities. Father, you are an ever-loving, righteous, gracious, merciful God. And so, Lord, I just bless you. I bless you for those that can hear my voice. I bless you for those who can see the picture. Father, I just pray your hand upon them. And Lord, that, that you will help me, Holy Spirit, get this song together in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Let's just have a little old giggle. <laughs> I love it. Sorry, sorry. I know I'm going to stop playing with this little toy. But, uh, I give it my big shot. Above all powers, above all kings, above all nature and all created things, above all wisdom and all the ways of man, you were here before the world began. Above all kingdoms, above all thrones, above all wonders this world has ever known, above all wealth and treasures of the earth, there's no way to measure what You took the fall and 
thought of me above I don't know if I deserve an applause but thank you anyway hi man jeez what a great week eh? tell you what you know, you know that things are coming to a close, eh? Hey? When you see the intensity of what's going on around the world, wars and rumors of wars and pestilence and sickness and disease and all of that. But beside all of that, one thing we know for sure, even as we sang that song, is God is above all. Everything is subject to Him. So that's, that's a good thing that's going on. So, today, my story is called, and I think you all know this little idiom. Look at it. Curiosity killed the cat. <laughs> hey, you know what I mean? Okay, so here's the scenario. Okay. You walk into the room. And on the table, there's a little gift. See the gift? But it's a sign that says, Danger, do not open. <laughs> you know where we're going with this one. Eh? So, curiosity of the cat is an idiom proverb used to warn of the dangers of unnecessary investigation and experimentation. Yes, it also implies that being curious can sometimes lead to the danger or misfortune. Look here, there's nothing wrong with having an inquiry mind. But there's a huge difference between having an inquiry mind and just curiosity for the sake of being curious. Okay. So what is it about us and the sense of curiosity? It's weird, eh? You see a sign that says, don't touch wet paint. And you look left, you look right, and then you, you test the paint anyway. Hey, I do. Often I'd be walking around with one finger with paint and a fingerprint, the evidence on, and then you think, okay, I'll just give it a wipe and then it becomes a smudge. Uh, yeah, it's so stupid. Uh, but you, you're going to say, no, Russ, you like that. I'm not like that. And, and yeah, you're probably right. So instead of us just leaving it alone, bearing in mind the sign says two things. The first part it says, don't touch. Don't touch. And then the second part is wet paint. So it says, don't touch. And the reason is that the paint is wet. The first command is, don't touch. Well, if we get told not to do something, don't look in the box, don't knock on the door, don't go in that room, don't go to the club, don't do this, don't do that, because it's out of bounds, what do we do? A little rebellious nature comes creeping up and goes, nobody is going to tell me what I can or what I can't do. Hey. <laughs> Yeah, like that. I tell you, I think it used to make my folks a bit crazy. Because they'd say, don't do this, and I would do it. Like in winter, in Cape Town in winter, it'd be raining. I'd wear shorts, a t-shirt, and barefoot in the rain. And then come summertime, and I got the thickest jersey on. My parents thought I was a little bit touched. A little, <laughs> a little different. So... Is this a new phenomenon? This thing of rebellion, of, of disobeying when we get told, don't do, don't touch it. Because you see, we hate rules. We, we hate parameters. We hate constraints. My late dad, we never had a cell phone or any other fancy stuff. He used to stand on the veranda. Now for those in South Africa that are, are watching, the name is Stoop. He stood on the Stoop. The porch, you know, the porch, the veranda. No, it was a stoop. And he'd whistle. And it didn't matter where I was in the neighborhood, I'd stop playing, 
and I'd go home because I know it's dinner time. But every now and then, I'd hear the whistle and then stretch it a little bit. And he was quite gracious. He used to get to a certain point and then he would adjust my attitude with a fivefold ministry. Yes. <laughs> and it's no harm in that. I promise you, I didn't die. I'm still alive. So, when did this phenomena start? Well, it's, it's easy. Adam and Eve. Watch this. It's probably one of the first stories that you knew about. Adam and Eve. And they went to the garden and God said, don't do this. And then they did it. But I'll read it to us. Genesis 2, 15 to 17. Then the Lord God took the man and put him in the garden of Eden to tend and keep it. And the Lord commanded the man, saying, Now notice he said to the man, Yeah. Of every tree of the garden you may freely eat, but of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil you shall not eat. For in that day that you eat of it, you shall surely die. <laughs> now let's face it. If, if I put poison on the table and I say to you, Listen, don't touch it. Don't drink it, don't smell it, just leave it alone. Because if you drink that or eat that thing, you're going to die. Now watch this. But can you imagine? So, they're sitting there, he's sitting over there. They've probably walked up to the tree a few times, you know, just give it a little sniff walk up to it, walk past it, try and ignore it. But hey, it started getting harder and harder. They probably just, you know, tested it. Hey. Like the thing is, don't touch it, you'll get a shock. Then we go, we, we wet our finger to check if we get a shock. It's the worst thing to do. But then now, oh, oh, check, I got a shock. Yeah, well, don't touch it. So now they take a little bit closer. Hey. Hmm doesn't look that bad. Looks okay. Probably picked a leaf off, rubbed it in there. Oh, how's that fragrance? Oh, this is so good. It smells quite good, you know. And it, it, it really doesn't look that bad. You know? And instead of just leaving this thing alone, they started obsessing about it. You know when you're young and, and your folks say to you, listen, I don't want you going to those those discos and those clubs. Do they, I don't even know they still call it disco. Sorry, I'm a, I'm a little bit out of touch. Yeah, you can't go there. Or, oh, listen, I don't want you hanging out with that boy. And what does the, the little auntie think? Huh, I wonder why they won't let me go out with that boy. He seems nice. Besides, he's so popular. And I'll be popular too if I go out with him. <laughs> It's a big trouble coming. And so they probably thought, look, we're just obsessing with this tree. Let's just chill out. You know, so they sat there and they made the decision, we're going to leave the tree. We're not going to do this thing. After all, you know, Adam was saying to Eve, listen, think about it. God's given us everything. He's given us dominion over everything. Yeah, Genesis 1, 28 to 30. Then God blessed them and said to them, Be fruitful and multiply, fill the earth and subdue it. Have, have dominion over the fish of the sea, over the birds of the air, and over every other living thing that moves on the earth. And God said, See, I've given you every herb that heals seed which is on the face of all the earth, and every tree whose fruit heals seed. To you it shall be for food. Also, to every beast of the earth, to every bird of the air, and to everything that creeps on the earth in which there is life, I have given every green herb for you to eat. And it was so. And then they must have thought, but wait, that's a bit of a loophole. I know he said, do not touch, don't go, don't eat, don't participate, don't partake. But now he's just told us, you know, he's given us everything. Dominion. Heh. Who's in charge here? Who's making the decisions? And then that little itch. 
that tree. And Atalian must have been even talking, must have been saying to them, Eat me! Eat me! And they go, No! I'm going to be strong. I'm going to resist. I'm going to submit myself to God. I'm going to humble myself. And I'm going to resist. I know this story, it's too familiar. Genesis 3, 1 to 7, the temptation and the fall of man. Now the serpent was more cunning than any beast of the field which the Lord had made and said to the woman, has God indeed said, you shall not eat of every tree of the garden? And the woman said to the serpent, we may eat of the fruit of the trees of the garden, but of the fruit of the tree which is in the midst of the garden, God has said, you shall not eat it, nor shall you touch it. <laughs> you see, curiosity, they touched that thing, lest you die. Then the serpent said to the woman, you will not surely die, for God knows that in the, the day, your eyes, uh, the, the day you eat of it, your eyes will be open and you will be like God, knowing good and evil. So the woman saw that the tree was good for food. And it looks all right. And that it was pleasant to the eyes and the tree desirable <laughs> to make one wise she took up its fruit and ate she also gave to her husband with her and he ate then the eyes of both of them were opened and they knew that they were naked and they sewed figs together and made themselves coverings <laughs> you know when your curiosity gets the better of you and you get hooked and the fear of being caught, and then you cover up, delete, 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 delete history, tear up the photographs, hope nobody made a video, you, you know that thing. All your tracks are covered. But in out of the darkness, the truth will come out. So what has caught our curiosity? A smile, a fleeting glance, a word in season, a little flirting. You know what? There's no harm in flirting, eh? It's a boys' night out and we, we just window shopping. <laughs> More like shoplifting. Don't be window shopping. This thing of, well, we're going out with the boys, we're going out with the girls, and it's just going to have some innocent fun. Let me tell you, it, it gets difficult because then that tree starts looking very attractive. Let me just read what the tree looked like. Where was that thing about the tree? Yeah, yeah, it says, good for food, pleasant to the eyes, desirable to make one wise. We need to be very, 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 very careful what it is that we get ourselves involved in because before we know what happens, we're going to get hooked in. 2 Samuel 11, 2, 5. Now here's a guy that had it all together. He was anointed, he was appointed, he was a man after God's own heart. He had victory upon victory. He had a spot of bother here and then, you know, with, with uh, King Saul. But overall, he was he's a pretty good guy. Uh, listen to this. Then it happened one evening that David arose from his bed and walked on the roof of the king's house. And from the roof he saw a woman bathing, and the woman was very beautiful to behold. Mm. So David sent and inquired about the woman, and someone said, Is this not Bathsheba, the daughter of Eliam, the wife of Uriah, the Hittite? Now, now there, okay, okay, okay. The first thing was when he noticed that she was bathing, I don't think she bathed with her clothes on. So, he peeped into the box. He had a little look into that gift box. He opened up the wrapper and saw the contents and it hooked him. Ha! Huh, what does it say? Ah, then David sent messages and took her and she came to him and he lay with her for she was cleansed from her impurity and returned to her house. And the woman conceived and so she sent and told David and said, I am with child. Ay, 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 ay. You see, you go sneaky, sneaky, and you think all the, all the 
bases are covered and everything's good and you go around, but somehow something goes wrong. And so, curiosity killed the cat. When that first initial thing comes to your eyes, turn away, don't get involved. You know, sometimes you're on the laptop, sometimes I'm preparing my preach, and I promise you, in the middle of, you know, you do your online Bible, and like, wow, where did that come from? It's an odd thing to be popping up in the middle of it. See, but it's what we do with it. Do we stop? walk away, or do we take the ribbon off and open the box and partake of the contents? I want to end with this, it's in the book of Galatians, just so that we know what we're talking about. Galatians 5, 19 to 21, in the New King James. Now the works of the flesh are evident, which are adultery, fornication, uncleanness, lewdness, idolatry, sorcery, hatred, contentions, jealousies, outbursts of wrath, selfish ambitions, dissensions, heresies, evil, envy, murders, drunkenness, revelries, and the like. You see, if we're going to be searching, and if we're curious and we want to know more, then we should be going into the Word to discover more about this incredible God we call Father. and His Son, Jesus Christ, and the Holy Spirit. I mean, can you imagine? You go into the Word and you start to dig and you start to delve and these nuggets of incredible truths of life start to come forth and it starts to deal with every area of our lives. And it cleanses us and it washes us and it brings us to a place where to follow God and to follow Jesus and to be led by the Holy Spirit is not a case of do or don't. Do I open the box? Do I peep inside? Do I partake from it? But it would really be a case of Holy Spirit, thank you. Thank you that you've won. I trust that this little story has been helpful. I know it helps me. All these stories always start here first. It helps me and I trust that it would help you too. But anyway, this is Uncle Russ signing off from Kosamoy. Have a blessed evening, have a blessed time and do not let your curiosity get the better of you but rather search the scriptures. Jesus said, I came that you may have life and life more abundantly. The thief comes but to rob, to kill, and destroy. Jesus comes to give us abundant life. Bless you. Thank you. Please, if you have any questions, any queries, any comments, I don't care. Give me good, bad, and ugly. I don't mind. But if you want to have prayer and you want to discuss anything further, till next time. Shall I do a little applause to say goodbye? Au revoir. God bless and thank you.